Hi, welcome back to part three of Ayurveda with Linda. Here's a different angle that I want to take on, on Ayurveda. Recently, I suggested a single herb for a client experiencing anxiety. And I knew this herb would not interfere with uh, other medications because I had learned that knowledge. And it's important to know that because just because it's a natural herb doesn't mean that it doesn't have adverse effects. So the client did double check with their psychiatrist. So they were under the care of a psychiatrist. And I appreciated that uh, the client did that. Um, and I appreciated that the psychiatrist was open to it. So the psychiatrist did their research and okayed the use of the single herb, which was affirming for sure. And the psychiatrist was actually rather impressed with the herb and the studies done on the herb. And they thought they would recommend it to some of their own clients. They were so impressed with it. Again, very, very affirming to have that connection with Western medicine uh, and doctors in Western medicine being supportive of Ayurveda. So my client experienced a noticeable change within 24 hours of her level of anxiety. And this is someone who has had long-term anxiety, as well as other serious psychological issues, for which, again, that she has sought out appropriate doctors. And this is someone also for whom I have known uh, a long time and have worked with before. So I did feel comfortable to work within my scope. No medication, no Western, no Western medication had been able to really address the anxiety at all. She had tried several uh, medications over the years. But in Ayurveda has an excellent track record in regards to anxiety. Of course, each person needs to be properly assessed according to their unique health and the state of the imbalances and all the other components that I've mentioned in previous videos uh, has to be there. And in Ayurveda, remember, it's not about throwing the kitchen sink at issues. So in the classical texts, it says that medicine and medicine can be, can be, um, you know, a lifestyle change. It can be a spice or an herb should do the job and should not create any more problems. Think about that. So to the credit of Ayurvedic practitioners or Ayurvedic doctors, they need to know this information. They need to have this pharmaceutical knowledge and they, they get it from a Western, from, a, from an, an Ayurvedic perspective. So it really ends up being quite logical that dietary changes and lifestyle changes alone do make a huge impact um, when consistent and the behaviors and the actions that have been aggravating the situation are then removed or reduced, then boom, the body and the mind are given the space to repair and correct and rejuvenate. And in this case, a single herb, just a single herb in addition to diet and lifestyle was all that was needed to make really a life altering situation for this person. This person just had never hadn't felt relief like that in so long. So diet and lifestyle do have to start changing first and then the herbs uh, and the formulations can be properly utilized in the body. So I'm sure some of us have tried something that we've learned about and, and we try it and like, it didn't do anything. It's not that it didn't do anything or it didn't work or, you know, it's not, it, it, it's, it's fake or whatever. It's that it wasn't the right formulation for you. And this again speaks to the deeper knowledge and the deeper awareness that we have to, that, that we really have to have when it comes to our health and certainly in terms of Ayurveda. So this is the science part of it. Um, you're not, and you're not going to get that really from online searches. There is nothing in Ayurveda that is a blanket panacea for everyone, except maybe drinking fresh boiled water on a regular basis. Uh, and I know I've said in the past, I have said in the past, that everyone should be doing Abhyanga or everyone should be taking Trifala. And now I get it. I get it. It's not the case. You need to know what you are doing. 
So that's why either you're going to study Ayurveda yourself more and more in depth, or you can do that and work with an Ayurvedic practitioner who has done the studying. Another point that I can include here is about Ayurveda's impact on the mind. It is said that Agni, so Agni is that digestive fire, uh, that, that fire that is within our cells, within our digestive system, uh, even within our, our minds, uh, within our nervous system. It's, the, it's a general term meaning so much. It's a very packed word, Agni. The digestive fire of everything is responsible for our complexion, our cognitive function, our strength, our health, our enthusiasm, our longevity, our life force. So that is why taking care of even just digestive Agni alone has such a far-reaching impact on our overall health. That's what makes it sound simple and therefore easily discountable. You know, like, oh yeah, we're all used to having digestive disruption, where it's just kind of par for the course. It's just how it is. But that's not so. That's not a right line of thought. That's going to lead us to all kinds of, of uh, problems and difficulties. Our Western mind has a hard time with this. We have kind of, you know, we have an intellectual standing, uh, understanding that the mind and the body are connected despite Western medicine still separating the two and still compartmentalizing our bodies. Um, so we're getting this disconnect in, in information. But we need to take that understanding. If we have any kind of sense of that, the mind and the body are connected, we need to take that deeper and really know, right? So there's a difference between, oh yeah, I know they're connected and oh no, I know they're connected. That's what we're looking for. Then Ayurveda is even easier to learn, and you then have a respect for the depth and breadth of it. So in closing, I just want to emphasize that Ayurveda is both simple and complex. Ayurveda is preventative and it's therapeutic. Ayurveda can be applied for daily use and for medicinal use. It is important to know the principles of Ayurveda. And it's important to know why you're taking an herb or spice or doing some habit versus having no awareness of it at all and just doing it because someone tells you to or you read it. So if Ayurveda intrigues you and you want to learn more, please sign up for my newsletter at my website, backwoodsyogini.com, or look for an email post on Facebook. Um, I have several email posts of signing up for uh, the email list right through uh, Facebook. And I also offer uh, Ayurveda education uh, classes and groups, as well as Ayurveda consultations. Thank you so much for watching these and uh, enjoy.